absolutely is the best time in the history of the species to be a seeker after knowledge because so much is available to us. And it's not just available individually, like books stacked up in some warehouse. It's all connected. You can get from one idea to another, to its opposite, to a refutation, to additional evidence, um, through a literally endless series of links. This makes this stuff available to us. We have never even had a dream of that until a few decades ago. It means it is absolutely the best time to be a seeker after knowledge. It's also the best time to be a complete idiot, and that's the problem. I mean, if you want to just be inundated with amusing, entertaining lies, then you can. If you want to be hateful and get very angry at people you don't like for whatever reason, this is also a great time. The truth is, we're all, we all do both things to some degree. We seek after knowledge for sure, and we also, we may not be engaging in hating people, but we also want to be entertained. We want to spend some time on activities that are not necessarily making us better people, but are making us a little happier for a moment. Um, it's for that too, it's uh, an amazing time. So the internet, because it's taken down so many barriers, it has connected everything across all distances, which is absolutely new in human experience, has let us see a little bit more about ourselves. In these days, people tend to focus on the horrible things about us, and it's important. We need to stop or you know, stop that sort of behavior. Um, but it's also important to remember the things about us that the positive things about humans that the internet has revealed. And one of the earliest and, and is the um, our willingness to engage in collaborative efforts, building something, um, being a small piece of a large effort that builds something that we care about often getting no recognition. Uh, we, that's not, we've always known that humans will do that. We've always had this good side. It's very heartening to see it happen across the globe, um, sometimes in creative ways. Uh, writing, uh, there's a wonderful music video that was created by strangers across the web. One frame, people contributing one frame at a time, the johnnycashproject.com. There's Wikipedia that has, is a remarkable resource, unthinkable, just 20 years ago, that this would succeed. And to a large degree, Wikipedia is not perfect. It is so much better than anybody would have thought. Um, this tells us something about ourselves that I think is very promising and hopeful. I would be happy if there was, a, and I think there is, a flowering of peer-to-peer, -peer, collective, networked, knowledge, knowing how we know things, not a body of knowledge. Because um, I think there's actually, one of the things the internet is, is exposing is there are issues with that concept that there's some body of knowledge of true things that, we're, um, that we can agree upon. But collectively knowing things, helping one, one another um, learn what's worth believing, um, both because it's true, but also because it advances human needs and um, I would be very happy if we spent a couple generations doing that, learning how to do that well, and not worry about wisdom. Wisdom seems to me like an end state, the sort of thing that, that's why I think it's often attributed to old people, they're the ones who are wise. It's sort of weird to say that a young person is wise, just the way that we use the word, at least in English. It's because wisdom is an end state, and I'm not sure there are end states, and I'm way more interested in the in this, the collective building, the activity of knowing together. Fake news is, at this point, unfortunately, a very broad term, largely because our totalitarian president in the United States has twisted it. Um, and he's a lying idiot, one might add. Um, but in the more narrow sense, where it started, it was news that was intentionally false, that was put out for political reasons, or other, mainly political reasons, I guess. And that's, in some ways, so the, in some ways that problem is sort of addressable because it's not exactly the fake news, it's the incentives that some organizations have had in order to prey upon human weaknesses, ones that all of our brains have, um, in order to indoctrinate them, uh, so, uh, indoctrinate people into beliefs that help politically or economically. There's a set of incentives that need to be disrupted that are causing the 
fake news to be worthwhile creating. Um, I don't know what the solution is. Um, I don't know that there is a solution. We may all be doomed and going to hell. It's entirely possible. There's nothing that says that we are not all going to put ourselves into hell together. On the other hand, there were similar sorts of problems in the history of the internet. Not as, not as vicious a problem, but for example, spam, which mm -hmm. 20 years ago <laughs> threatened to kill email. Because all you got was spam, and it was scams and spam, and then... It was, yes, so, um, and the filters, because they were an early form of machine learning, and I'll stick with that, it's not quite right, but it's close enough. Um, they turned out, fairly simple filters turned out to be remarkably effective. Um, it was not a huge technological breakthrough, although spam filtering now is very technical, but it, it solved the problem, at least well enough that email continued. No, it's not guaranteed. It wasn't, that wasn't guaranteed. It could have killed email. Um, and it's not guaranteed that fake news is going to be of the sort, uh, uh, fake news intentionally created in order to fool people, that we're going to be able to guard against that. But I am not fully in despair yet. People believe, depends on the sort of fake news. So people believe fake news for all sorts of reasons. Uh, sometimes it's uh, um, often because it supports a set of beliefs that they are invested in holding. We're all invested in holding on to the beliefs that we have. It's very upsetting when the rare times in our lives when we radically change our mind and we discovered everything we believed about something was false is a very disturbing. Um, <laughs> and it, it, it doesn't happen very much. We generally learn and know uh, incrementally. We, uh, some new piece and we, we understand it in terms of how it fits into the rest of what we believe. And that's how understanding works. It's how conversation works as well. So um, we have uh, an incentive, and it's not a bad incentive, to make sense of things by appropriating them to what we already understand. When that's manipulated, um, it can be manipul manipulated because we now know that our brains have many ways of tricking us. The brains are not tuned, th they're not designed, so to speak. Of course, they're not designed at all, but they're not designed in order to give us a true picture of the world, they're designed to enable us first to survive and then to, to flourish. Um, brains trick us in lots of different ways, usually to our advantage, but not always. And so confirmation bias is a brain trick. That is, we tend to believe things that confirm what we already believe. And there's, I mean, there's lots of other things. I've, denying, if a newspaper denies uh, shows that something is a lie simply by repeating it. Even though they're showing it's a lie, it turns out that we are more likely to believe it's a lie. Um, so you can manipulate the brain that way, as if, as, like with optical illusions, but they're cognitive illusions. Um, and sometimes, it, sometimes it's an emotional thing. Um, we, we are subject to getting things wrong. And one of the most important things that I hope we can learn from our experience on the internet is we need to take knowing our world, understanding our world to a meta level where we are thinking not just about what we're reading but where it's coming from, what the incentives were, how it fits, what the other possibilities are, what is the likelihood or probability that something is true, that something that we're being told is true. We need to be one level up. We need to be trained to learn to be one level up in our cognition. And I do think that's an evolutionary step that I see us making.